Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today I want to talk about loneliness, the human epidemic. And it is an epidemic. When psychologists research loneliness, they find that loneliness spreads from person to person. The more lonely you feel, the more lonely you tend to make other people feel, the more lonely they tend to make other people feel. We cut ourselves off from each other's and they cut themselves off from each other's in turn. So loneliness is a big problem, it's a big modern problem. We feel more lonely today than we have ever done before, at least since we started measuring it. And Carl Jung, he has this to say about loneliness. He says, loneliness does not come from having no people about one, but from being unable to communicate the things that seem important to oneself, or from holding certain views which others find inadmissible. So here you can see a few things. Loneliness is often mistaken for not having friends and not having people around. And we often assume we can cure loneliness by making friends and by connecting with people around us. But if we connect with other people around us without communicating the things we find important in ourselves, if we hide who we are, if we pretend that we don't feel a certain way, or if we hide our feelings and our values and our hobbies from other people, we still feel lonely. Yeah, you can go into a group of people and you can pretend to be just like them and you can mimic all their signals and everything they do. And you'll find you leave this situation feeling more lonely than you did before. And often you leave this situation making other people feel more lonely than they did before. So there's one problem here. And then there was another thing. Carl Jung also said loneliness can stem from having views that you don't believe other people share or things you cannot say. You think things but you cannot speak them out. You feel things but you cannot share them with other people. Perhaps you're struggling. Yeah, haven't we all been there at some point? You know, that's perhaps why it's such a relief when you can actually speak out about how you feel, when you can actually let people know what you're dealing with and what you're going through, when you can actually tell people your struggles. It feels like such a relief to finally get something off your chest. And here's the thing, a lot of people seem to believe that loneliness is something you can easily stop feeling. You can just go out and talk with people. People think there's an easy remedy to loneliness, just talk with other people, just interact with others. But loneliness isn't that easy to stop. And the thing is, if there was an easy remedy, we wouldn't feel lonely at all. We don't feel lonely if we know that we can easily go out and participate with other people and have fun with others. If we know people are around and that we can always go out and talk with others, we don't feel the same need to do it. It is feeling that you can't that is making you feel lonely. It's the lack of control that makes it a problem. We cannot control it. We cannot do something about it. There are things that are blocking us from doing it. Loneliness is focused on what you don't have that other people have. When you feel lonely, you're so aware of all the things you lack. You're not good enough. You're not uh, good at those games that everyone else is playing. You're not uh, pretty enough. You're, you're not smart enough. You're not uh, funny enough to be able to participate with other people. You feel that you lack something. You notice that you don't share other people's values. But you also don't notice what you have. Loneliness makes you cut off, not just from other people, but from yourself. You start feeling unsure of what you have, what your humor is, what your values are, what you are good at. You focus so much on what you don't have, what you lack, what you're not good at, that you can't see what you're good at, and what you can't see what you're, in which ways you are funny, or in which ways you are kind, or in which ways you are intelligent. So... Loneliness has to be a disconnection to self. It is when we are aware of... It is when we lack awareness of who we are that we feel the most lonely. And the big appeal of Carl Jung is his work on making people more aware of their gifts and differences, making them feel less alone. And that is why the MBTI became so popular. The MBTI started verifying to people, you like this, you feel this way, you have these values, you care about these things. They start showing you the ways you think, your unique ways of being funny and of connecting and of 
thinking and in doing so reminding yourself you feel less lonely. People are so addicted to the MBTI and to understanding their own personality type because it is the reminder that we don't get anywhere else. Nowhere else in society, in school or in other circumstances in life are we made so aware of our own unique gifts and values. In fact, most of society is wired to show you what you lack and what you need to improve at. Every conversation is focused on what you want to work on, what you want to improve at, what your weaknesses are. Everyone wants to find out your problems before they find out your gifts. And that's perhaps why we don't realize it. And in this I can release a do's and don'ts list to loneliness. What you should do when you're lonely. Admit to yourself that you have unique values and differences. Reconnect to self. Make a list. Write down everything you like to do. All your hobbies. All your interests. And embrace and verify that in yourself. Support other people when they talk about what they like and what is important to them. Tell them, wow, that's an interesting subject. Wow, that's cool that you feel that way about that. Oh, that's interesting that you like those things. Find outlets for your values and your feelings in the world around you. Find ways to express your interests, ways to channel your values into the world around you. And this is the list of don'ts. Hide, don't hide your values, don't pretend to be like everyone else. It won't make you feel less lonely. Don't try to make up for not sharing other people's values through acts of service by giving other people what they want and ignoring your own needs. And don't run away from and avoid facing the world to avoid being reminded of being different. Yeah, it sounds straightforward enough enough but yet we still do these things why well this has to do with pure human survival when you are alone the worst thing you can do is start talking about what you care about what you think and what you want a person who is alone and who speaks strongly for their own values it has it is at risk of being branded a witch or crazy or dangerous there is nobody that will protect you from the mob in front of you if they find out what you really think what you really feel what you really care about and so we assume the best we can do is try to make ourselves useful to other people, to give them what they want, to focus on serving and taking responsibility for other people while ignoring your own needs and your own values in the process. Yeah, people will fall into all kinds of survival strategies. They'll try hard to play by the rules to avoid provoking outrage. They'll try to show loyalty, feeling that... While I don't have the qualities that everyone else does, while I'm not as funny or as good as everyone else, I'm still loyal and I'm still always there for other people. And because I'm loyal, maybe I'm worth keeping around. Or perhaps they will rebel and seek a place away from the world, alienating themselves from other people, hiding away like going off in a cave or into the forest, into the wild where nobody can get them. Or perhaps they'll pour themselves into art and creative exercise, searching for something within them that people will finally love and appreciate. And maybe they will search for answers and insights, some kind of revelation, some kind of skill or knowledge that will make them valuable to other people. But yeah, none of these strategies will combat that feeling of loneliness. None of these people will realize what powers they have within. None will remember the values they possess and all will share this feeling of disconnectedness because they're so focused on how other people feel and what other people value that they don't value. And so there is only one remedy to loneliness and that is reminding yourself of who you are and what you feel and what you think, scrolling through your friend list and instead of thinking none of these people want to hang out with me, realize that you don't want to hang out with any of these people. You don't enjoy any of these people. You don't have fun with any of these people because you're not able to be yourself with them at this point. Write down lists that remind you of what you like, of how you want to be, of how you want to dress, of what you like to do. And realize that this is your armor. Connectedness to yourself will make you more connected to other people. When you wear and dress and speak out for who you are, you will also attract other people like you. They will see you and they will want to talk to you and they will appreciate you for what you do. 
introverts recognize that your mind has antennas, cables that are constantly trying to connect to the special things in the world around you. All you have to do is close your eyes, see the connections you make, see what gives you energy, see what gives you power, and let yourself be pulled to those things in the world around you. Find outlets for your theories, for your thoughts, for your memories, for your experiences, from your values, from what you think. And find outlets in the world around you that will represent that and that will connect with that. Extroverts, the world is full of things that want to connect with you. People that want to talk to you. Dreams that want you to realize them. Adventures that want you to have them. Things that want to be found by you. There are things in the world around you that, are, that want you to find them. And what things around you do you want to find what things around you will give you power what things around you will give you energy find those things that are the most worthy of you and let them connect with you let them become a part of you the more connected you become the more you want to share with other people and the thing is becoming more outgoing like this is a practice that takes practice it requires slow conscious exercise it's like building a muscle it's like setting up a support system it's like getting friends on your side that will help you in this goal it is making sure you get the positive feedback for being out there for getting out there for sharing it is having and putting yourself out there and then making sure that you have a support system that will say that's great or if it didn't work out that will still share you on and say you can do it try one more time it will work out becoming more outgoing is a step-by-step -step process that requires self-love and self-appreciation if you start feeling too overwhelmed or like it's too much or like you're too nervous or it's getting too much Remind yourself of your comfort zone, of where you are right now. Have a backup plan. Have a place you can retreat to, to regain your thoughts, to calm yourself down, to slow down, to breathe. And then, from there, once you recharged and reclaimed your inner stability and inner peace of mind, express yourself again, try again. And set reasonable expectations for you all the time. Reasonable challenges based on your level to get you to do the right things. Make sure that when you become more outgoing, you do it in a way of filling your life with things you like and things you love. Don't associate being more outgoing with doing things you dislike. Don't become more outgoing by doing things, engaging in hobbies that are not for you. By going to places you don't like. By talking to people that don't share your values. Find a way to become more outgoing by reaffirming yourself, your interests, your values and what you need. And from that place, push yourself out. That's how you get positive feedback for what you do. That's how you actually enjoy life. That's how you get to a situation that you can actually feel good about. It's a slow step-by-step -step process and it requires you to rewrite your brain, to rewrite your script, to stop telling yourself the things you tell yourself to discourage yourself from action, to change your mindset, but also to change your environment, to reinforce that mindset. So it's not just your thoughts, it's not just how you see the world, but it's also how the world actually is. If you need help in that process, feel free to make use of my Discord channel and our community. Share your experiences down below in the comments. Let other people know how you became more outgoing, how you became more expressive, how you started sharing of yourself. Start a YouTube channel or find a friendship circle, or find an interest group, people that share your thoughts or that are at your level. Find places people that will help you and help other people in turn share this video if you like it with other people and help them help you and in so we can end the epidemic that is loneliness and we can spread an epidemic that is connection thank you all for being here and i hope to see you all in the next video of course if you subscribe remember you will get hundreds of videos on personal growth and on self-development, on introverts, extroverts, outgoingness and reservedness. 
I love to talk about psychology and I like to expose issues and problems and solutions to modern day issues, things we are all dealing with, things we are all struggling with. Thank you all for being here and I hope to see you all in the next video.